Hey guys, it's Rogaway here, and today we are looking at a pretty awesome um, form of photography. And you know what? I don't know if it's considered photography or not, but it combines elements of video with photography. So these are called cinemagraphs, and here's a one that I just looked up on Google really quickly here. Now you can see that the majority of the photo, and I'm calling it a photo, is still just like a photograph. However, there are always elements in these cinemagraphs that move. All right, so let's look at a few different examples before we get started. All right, so there you go. You got the bubbles going. Now, why do I consider this a form of photography? Well, you still have to have really good composition. And like I said, the majority of this is sitting still. It's a photograph. However, it's a neat way of combining technology with photography. And so when I see these, I think of something like Harry Potter, where... Um, you know, when they're reading the newspaper, the pictures are moving. It's a similar idea. This is all based on animated GIFs, which or GIFs, as people keep uh, correcting me. Animated GIFs, which have been around forever. However, because um, they're at high res, high quality, uh, they look really excellent. And, you know, you can use them as backgrounds or screensavers or... Um, on your phone if your phone has that capability. Really cool. All right, so let's look at how these are created. For the uh, one that I started with here, first of all, I'll open up the tutorial folder. For the one that I did, I created one for my living room. So we're going to start with image 9353, and we're going to open that up with Photoshop. It's a raw file. There we go. There it is. And I've gone and already made the adjustments to the color and, um, you know, lens correction is on, the, added a bit of a vignette, all of that's done. Because each shot in the sequence here was done in the same settings, we're going to create a preset. And the way you do that is you go to the second icon from the right up here, presets, and you create a new one. And I'm going to call it house. Really descriptive here. The cool thing, um, or well, when we were figuring out what we were going to do for this one, um, I thought, okay, well, what can I, what can I have moving? I didn't want to make it overly, you know, complicated. So I turned on the fan in my living room here, and I also turned on the fireplace. So I thought, with the fan and the fireplace going, that'd be kind of cool. I also thought maybe having the TV or the water running or maybe some steam coming off the pot would be cool, but that's really complicated and I just want to show you guys how to do it. I don't want to make it overly complicated. So we're going to open up this image. It's got, now we've created the preset and you know what? I should have explained more about the preset. When you create a preset, it saves all of the settings that you have for that raw image. Okay, your vignetting, your color adjustments, your uh, white balance, everything is saved in that preset. So when we hit open image, it will bring it into Photoshop. Just gonna take a second to load here. And now, whoa, it's so small, command zero. We can see the picture. This is our first frame in Photoshop. Now, a couple key things, very, very important. When you're doing cinemagraphs, you need to use a tripod. Your camera cannot move at all. I also recommend using a remote trigger so that you don't, by accident, bump the camera while you're taking your photos. Um, and obviously, burst mode is very important so that you get a sequence of movement in your shots. One other thing I added here, and I'll explain uh, what I did and 
um, it'll be in the tutorial folder, is we're going to go into Actions. We're going to go to Window Actions to get that to show. We're going to just go to Load Actions from the corner of that window, Load Actions, and go to Downloads and, sorry, not Downloads, you're going to go to your Tutorial folder. And I got a file called Instagram Actions by Dbox. So props to Dbox for creating this and hit open. That will add this to the bottom of your actions and now if you pull down the tab, you now have most of, almost all of the Instagram actions in Photoshop. Now what's really cool about this is that in Instagram you have to, you're stuck to a small file size, you're stuck to a square image which is really weird. In this, you have the full capability of Photoshop, but the effects of Instagram, which combines both worlds really nicely. So I'm gonna use the Brandon effect, and I'm gonna hit play. And you'll notice that this photo, in a second, it's a big image, now has, as soon as it decides to catch up to me here, there we go. Now has the Brandon effect added to it. All right, so that's how I want my that's how I want my uh, cinemagraph to look. So that's the first frame done. Now I'm going to go to the next image, image nine three five four, and open that with Photoshop, and it'll open with RAW. And you'll notice that the color's really bad. This is actually how it was photographed. It was dark in my living room. I was going to put some lights on here and I just didn't do it. But now I got a preset, so I can just go to my preset and I can hit house and all of those adjustments are made for me because I was it was taken in the same environment. I got to just click that and I hit open image and I'm done. All right, so now the second frame is going to load into Photoshop. And the only thing I have to do once I bring it in here, Command Zero, is add the Brandon effect. And now my second frame looks just like my first frame. Everything has been added exactly the same, so the two pictures should match. There we go. Now let's take a look so we can switch between the two, um, what's it called, the two, um, tabs and you'll see as I do that you can see the fan spinning or starting to spin and you can also see the fire flickering all right those are the two things that I wanted moving okay this is gonna sound dumb but close both of these tabs don't save them I just wanted to show you how presets work and I wanted you guys to get your Instagram actions loaded up I've already gone to the trouble of making a folder called frames and it has frames 1 through 10 as JPEGs with the effects added to it already. So just drag them to Photoshop, add all 10 frames at once. The reason I did that is to save time because, you know, this tutorial is actually a bit trickier and uh, for the sake of not taking an hour to do it, um, I'm trying to save some time. So, along the top you've got the order, okay, of all your frames. You got, uh, we want to move frame one over to the left if that ended up on the right hand side. You want it to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, in order. And if you just shuffle through each one, you'll see that you've got different movement on the fan and on the fire for each one. You'll also notice that my camera did move a tiny bit. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that after. All right, so with that in place, sorry, uh, we're gonna go to frame two. And we're gonna press Command A to select the entire window. We're gonna go to Edit Copy just like that, and we're going to go to frame one, and now we're going to go to edit paste, 
So what happened there is it added a second layer to our image with that on there. Okay, so we can turn on and off the eye to see the movement. We can close tab two now. Tab three, command A, edit copy. Back to frame one, edit paste. It now adds a third layer with that image on there. And just keep on going. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat the steps here for you guys because I'm sure you get it. I'm going to just keep on adding each layer until I've gone through all 10. And again, this doesn't take too long. It's just repetitive, that's all. Command A, copy, and paste. Close it. Command A, copy, and paste. All right, we got a couple more here. Sorry, I should actually just edit this out because uh, it's, it is really repetitive. Copy, and paste. And the last one, frame 10. Copy, close it, and paste. Okay, so there we go. We got nine frames and one background. That gives us 10 frames total, which I think is more than enough to uh, create movement. And here's what you do to create your animation. Now, like I said, there's a bit of movement in this um, when I was shooting it. So... I'm actually going to close the actions window just so I can see more of my picture. Um, there's a bit of movement and that's going to cause a problem because you don't want anything moving. You want it to all be in perfectly in the same position so that you don't get weird um, shaking in your shot. So here's what you do. Select the top layer, which is layer 9 in this case. Make sure it's highlighted. Hold shift and click the bottom layer so that they all become highlighted. Go to edit, go to auto align layers, which is halfway down. Click reposition and hit OK. It's going to take a couple seconds. What it's doing is it's taking the layers and comparing them to each other and trying to put them as close as possible in the same position. This is a good um, start. It doesn't do a perfect job. This is just a good start. So it does its thing. And you might see some movement once it's done. There we go. And now what we can do is we can turn off the eye for all of our layers except for layer zero and just turn each one on. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is for movement between the two layers, okay? So I've got layer one, does it move? It does move a little bit, okay? We can see in here, it moves a tiny little bit. So what we can do is using the move tool, is we can just bump it with the arrow keys so that it's perfectly in position. And I also have to check the fire, that's important too. I'm going to tweak this all after, but I'll, I'm going to get it set up nicely first. Then we go on to layer two. Same deal, we check. Does it move? It moves a tiny bit. And what am I using as a guide, you might wonder? I'm using this light, actually. Looking at that. And I'm making sure that that is lined up perfectly. Next layer, layer three. Same deal, just a tiny bit of movement. I'm using my arrow keys. Now this looks like it rotated a bit too. Probably because my camera uh, started to twist a bit as it was taking the burst mode shots. That's okay, we're gonna fix it up after. Again, this is just to get it as lined up as possible to start. Now look at that one, way off. So that one we have to really move around quite a bit. There we go, now it's good. Okay, layer five, same thing, moves a lot. 
These are going to cause really noticeable shakes if you don't correct this right away. Good. Layer 6. Same deal, it's moved quite a bit. There we go. That's nice now. Layer 7. Same deal. There we go. Nicely lined up. Layer 8. They just seem to get worse as I go. <laughs> That's not bad. Good. And then the last one, layer 9. There we go. Pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. I'm good with that. Now command zero so we can see the entire picture once again. So now we have our layers pretty much in position nicely. However, we don't want to just leave it like that. We want to isolate the areas where the um, animation or where the movement is taking place. And here's what we do for that. We know that the fan is spinning and it's casting a shadow on the ceiling. So we need to select the area that has movement in it. And here's how you do that. We're going to go to the polygon, polygonal lasso tool. And we are going to click along this line here to about this point right here. We're going to go out at an angle. We're going to click back even off the page, it doesn't matter and we're going to click connect right there. Then we're going to hold space so that we can switch over to where the fireplace is. And here we're going to click, um, we're going to click the inner rectangle. And I forgot something very important. I think I just messed up. No, okay, good. Still selected. I forgot something really important. You have to hold shift as you do this because you want to add to your selection you don't want to erase your old selection so we're going to click 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 on the corners of where the movements taking place so press command zero so these are the areas where we're having movement in the fireplace and in the fan what we want to do is erase everything else in the scene so that it doesn't move at all the way you do that go to select inverse so that everything else is selected go to each layer and hit delete for every single layer all right we are deleting everything that shouldn't be there all right except for the last layer that one you don't want to touch because that gives us the picture for every other layer afterwards Press command, Z, command D to deselect. There we go. And let's look at how the images look. So you can see that they have some movement to them. All right. Each one moves a little bit. And that will affect our final picture. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not too worried about that. All right. So I'm going to just, I'm going to let it slide, but I actually should go and fix that up. The way I could do that really quickly and easily is I could take an eraser with a real soft brush. Okay, hardness is zero. And I could really gently just paint the edges of those areas that move. Okay, same within here. I don't know where that line is exactly, but I could just gently paint around that. And what that'll do is it'll soften the areas that move. Okay, next layer, same thing. I just gently soften the areas around 
Okay, just like that. You know what, I am gonna do this just because I think it's, it's more correct to do it and it'll look better at the end. So I'm just softening those areas. Do you see the fan spinning? All right, and we're gonna go on to the next layer. Same thing, soften the edges of the fireplace and of the fan up here, following it back just like that. All right. Next layer, same deal. This is again very repetitive, but like I said, the result will be worth it at the end by doing this and fixing it now. All right, we're half, more than halfway through here. And I'm going to just make sure that we don't have any issues. All right. So it looks like, like I said, it looks like my camera rotated a tiny bit, which is, it sucks, but we can fix it for the most part just by cleaning up and softening these edges. Okay, almost done. Good. All right, now, if I was doing this to make it perfect, I could go in and make a selection around the fan and around the fireplace and move them uh, so that they are perfectly in the same position for every frame. That's what that auto align feature is supposed to do, but it, it doesn't work perfectly. It's kind of glitchy. So it does it the best that it can do. Makes it a best guess. Okay, so we're gonna have some movement there. I can see it already, but let's carry on anyways. We're gonna go to window and we're gonna go to timeline. Here's something that is not used very often and we're gonna go create video timeline. And you're gonna see it almost looks like a video editor that comes in. That's what you wanna see. And make sure all the eyes are turned on on your layers. Now you don't have to click each one. I hope you guys know that. You don't have to click each one. You just hold down the mouse and turn them all off that way, like that. Or you can hold it down and turn them all on. That's just a little trick. Before we do anything, You'll notice that we got a bit of an edge here that is transparent. We want to crop that out. We're going to go to Crop Tool. We're going to just tweak that and fix it a bit. And hit Enter. Just like that. All right, now, in the timeline window, you have got 10 frames, just like your, your uh, frames of your, whoa, sorry. You got 10 frames just like in your Photoshop file and each one represents a layer of your file. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the end of this bar and you're going to wait until it changes into this kind of black icon with two arrows. You're going to pull this and you're going to set the duration. See it says duration to one frame. So you're going to pull it all the way over for each one except for the background layer. All right, so I'm gonna just tweak those all. Pull them all over like that. This is quick and easy. All right. Now for the background layer, for layer zero, you wanna pull it to about well, let's go for a duration of 10 because that's what it's going to be. All right, pull it all the way till you see duration 10. 
and that's what that's going to end up as anyways. Now at the bottom of the timeline you have this, it looks like um, small mountains <laughs> right here or large ones. This tells you how zoomed in you are with your timeline. So go to the largest on the right slider. What you're going to do is you're going to pull down each layer in order. So we got layer one is here. You're going to take layer two, you're going to pull it down, then you're going to go layer three. And what it's doing is it's adding each frame of the animation into the timeline. Oh, and I lied. There's only nine frames, so just pull that down one less. And you can cycle through here to see how your animation's looking, and, and it should look pretty decent. I know mine does looks pretty good up there. Okay. And now that we have that done, we've created an animation in Photoshop, but there's a very important way that we have to save this in order for it to work. First of all, we don't want it really, really huge because that's not going to work. It's going to be laggy. It's going to be slow. It's, it's just not going to look good. So what I like to do is I go to my system preferences and just give that a second to load here. And I look at the resolution of my display because let's say I want to use this as a background for my computer because I like it. Okay, wait for that to load. Maybe it's already back there somewhere. Let me just move to see if it came up. I don't see it. There it is. Displays. And when this comes up, it says best for built-in display, go to scaled. 1920 by 1080, that's what we want it to end up as. Or at least 1920, that's good enough. What do we do to get that? We go back into Photoshop. We go to image, image size. And this should be set to pixels here. I'm going to put in 1920. Okay, you can see that that's a little bit bigger. I can show you how to change that after. But for now, we're just going to hit OK. It's going to become smaller. So just press Command-0 again so that it fills up the screen. What it did is it reduced the size of your image. Remember the other value was 1080, so we're going to go Image, Canvas Size. We're going to change this to Pixels. Now we're going to set the height to 1080, like that. Hit OK. It's going to say that uh, a new canvas is smaller, some clipping will occur. Hit Proceed. And so we lose a little bit on the top and bottom. Not a big deal. OK. So once you're happy with that, you now have your frames, you have your image, and it's at the resolution of the, the screen, if that's what you want. Um, and so now we go to File. And we don't hit Save As. We don't do that. We go to Save for Web. This is very, very important. Save for Web. It's going to take a second to load. Now, Photoshop will automatically detect that that's an animated GIF. It will set it up here to GIF. As you can see, it's already done. It'll set up a palette of colors. And this is a very important part right here where it says looping options, set it to forever. You want it to loop forever. So you want it to just keep on looping. And you're going to hit save. And I'm going to put it to my desktop. And I'm going to call it uh, animation. Or, you know what? I'll call it cinemagraph. Because that's what it is. And we're going to save it. So there it goes. It saves. You can save this file as well. Uh, you can call this Cinemagraph, and it's going to be a, a PSD. It's going to be a Photoshop file. All right, so that you don't lose that. And then you can close it. In fact, we can close Photoshop altogether. Just quit it. Now. 
that wasn't too smart because if the animation doesn't look good, you might want to go back and tweak it. But I have high hopes that that's not going to be a problem. So I'm just going to close my browser. Here's cinemagraph.tiff and to view it on the Mac here, we hit space. And now I get a view of what my animation looks like. So you can see there's a little bit of movement. I can see definitely some movement in the fan here as well. The way we could do that or how we could fix that is we could go back into our file and we can go to those frames and using the arrow keys move them as perfectly into position as possible. And we could get a perfect cinemagraph that way. However, that is pretty good just for uh, a quick attempt. That didn't take too long. I'm going to put it full screen. Like I said, you can see a little bit of movement up here. That's easy to fix just by going to the frame and, and tweaking it. All right, so hopefully you learned something there. And hopefully you guys make some of your own. I'd love to see what you come up with. Um, just to show you that it is possible with that one to uh, get it perfect. I did go to, um, I did take some extra time with it and make one that was better here for the same image uh, just by moving the frames. And that didn't take very long. There you go. So that one barely moves at all. And so it is possible. And at the end, it looks really nice. Like I said, it's a nice combination of photography with video videography as well um, yeah and I again I think that that's a, a neat effect anyways hopefully you got through that make sure you save it and um, like I said I'd love to see what you guys can come up with